Hi, everyone. Welcome to my new video series highlighting local heroes making a difference in our community. As I'm out visiting with constituents in the district, I'm always so inspired by the stories and amazing work of dedicated volunteers, public servants, and community members from so many different sectors. These local hero highlights will be an opportunity for you to learn more about your fellow El Pasoans and to also be inspired by their service. We are celebrating Black History Month. And so today I'm excited to speak with an amazing young leader and servant to the veteran community, Alexis McCray, U.S. Air Force veteran and chairwoman of the El Paso County Veterans Advisory Board. Alexis, thank you so much for making time today. Thank you for your incredible service and all you do for the, the community and for your fellow veterans. Tell us a little bit about yourself, about your time in the Air Force and how you came to El Paso. Okay, well, thank you for having me here. It's, it's a great pleasure to be a part of this. Um, I love that you're you know, wanting to highlight you know, our local veterans. There's several of us out here and we all are deserving of being recognized um, for our hard work and our contribution. So thank you. Um, so I am, like you said, I served on active duty for 11 years um, in the Air Force. I was stationed in Grand Forks, North Dakota. I was stationed at um, Buckley Air Force Base in Colorado. And lastly, I was stationed at Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio. Um, I deployed once to Kuwait um, back in 2010, um, and I separated in June of 2017 um, out of San Antonio, and I relocated to El Paso after uh, finishing my master's degree, um, and El Paso has been amazing to me since I've been here. Um, I've been here for about three years, and I got active in the veteran community um, probably about a year or so after being here right before COVID, <laughs> right oh before God. COVID shut everything down. <laughs> the timing, right? <laughs> yes. Um, so I've been a part of the uh, Veterans Advisory Board since October of 2020, um, and it's been a fantastic experience. Wow, that's fantastic. And, you know, I, I will tell you, I think civic engagement and, and giving back to the community is so rewarding. And, um, you know, part of, I think, what I hope we can accomplish with this conversation is maybe someone who's never been involved in, in an organization in our community realizes how wonderful it is to participate. And you have, it's, you're involved actually in multiple uh, organizations in our community, especially those that, that serve veterans. Can you tell us more about a few of them and, and just kind of what your experience has been giving back? So one of the earlier things that I did when I first got to El Paso was I joined the Women's Veterans Network. Um, I had gotten here and I didn't know anybody um, and it was hard for me to try to figure out what was what and who was who. Because uh, you know, El Paso is very close knit. Um, so it is all about who you know here. And so I started with the Women's Veterans Network um, and they are a social network group. Um, we met for eight weeks um, at Endeavors locally, um, January of 2020. Um, and fortunately, we were able to wrap up the group right before COVID shut down in March. Um, but that was where I got my start. And from there, we started um, helping with the veterans needs assessment um, that was taking part at that time um, and just getting information out, trying to, you know, at the commissary or at the VA, um, trying to get veterans enrolled to uh, take the survey. Um, after that, um, I started getting involved, of course, with the Veterans Advisory Board. And then another opportunity came about with uh, Faven's Veterans Park. Um, you know, Fabens is such a hidden gem for us, um, and it's such a great, loving community, and they really love our veterans out there. So getting on the Fabens uh, Veterans Park Committee was one of the things that I was most excited about working on. Um, and most recently, you know, we've been applying for grants, and, you know, we're working on, uh, working on park improvements with that as well. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm also helping with uh, a part of um, working on getting more memorials um, here done. Um, here in the local area right now. Um, I'm currently working uh, with Anthony um, on restoring a memorial park that's currently already there. Um, and I'm also playing with the idea of creating a woman's memorial here too. Um, wow. But there is a ongoing cleanup effort for Old Glory Memorial on the Northeast side. Um, and I'm giving some admin support to that. I'm trying to help with getting volunteers for that um, as well. So wherever I can get in. <laughs> Wow. Wherever I can see the support or wherever I can, I can see that I can make a difference. That's exactly where I want to be. 
Oh, that's so incredible, Alexis. We are so lucky to have you in our community. Um, so thank you for that. And it's hard to believe that you have any free time because not only are you a part of these great organizations and doing all this great um, you know, charitable work and, and public service work, but you're also a columnist for Black El Paso Voice newspaper. Can you tell us a little bit about the publication and what kind of stories you cover? So Black El Paso Voice has actually been around for quite some time. Um, we're right now um, working on a relaunch for it, um, trying to get everything, you know, of course, COVID threw everything out for a loop. Um, so uh, Black El Paso Voice, though, it is a publication company, um, but it's for all of El Paso. Uh, we want to actually be able to share and highlight Black stories and show what it's like to be Black here in this community, but also want to highlight some of the good things that we have ongoing and, you know, our other contributions that we do make to our community as well. Um, it's a platform to share information <laughs> for the most part. It's, you know, more ways to, to grasp our audience and more ways to, to engage with our community. Um, so with that, um, I call them changes every month. You know, it kind of depends on, you know, what, what I feel at the moment, you know, what I feel like is a hot topic at the moment. Um, but I definitely want to take time to highlight things that aren't even being talked about. You know, I want to start conversations. I want to initiate conversations. Um, especially things that are hard to talk about. Um, but I also uh, just started sharing veterans updates uh, where I actually do a live video stream, um, kind of similar to what we're doing now, but it'll be like on Facebook Live or Instagram Live where I actually can go and broadcast verbally, you know, and people can actually see me give announcements as well. So it's another avenue to, again, engage with our community and get the word out about what we're doing. Wow, that's incredible. Um, good for you. And um, the, I'm, I'm looking forward to the way that you are going to kind of expand the reach. That's exciting. You are also apparently a dog owner, <laughs> but also a licensed professional counselor. You um, uh, have a master's in counseling, I'm, and I know you're working on your doctorate. And I will tell you, I have such um, admiration for people who um, go into the, the that particular field. There's a, a a lack of enough professionals in that arena, and so I'm always happy to hear when when folks are are doing that really important work. What inspired you to choose this career field after your time in the military? I started my academic journey in the career field while I was still on active duty. Um, I ended up well. I got my associate's degree from Community College of the Air Force in Human Resource Management. Um, and from there, it took me so long <laughs> to get that degree done. My associate's degree is still the hardest degree I've gotten. It's still, it took me five years to get that two-year degree. It, <laughs> it, was, it was hard. <laughs> um, but from there, it got me excited to know what else is out there. It got me curious to see, you know, what more I could figure out just in general. Um, so from there, I went on to get my bachelor's in psychology. Um, and that opened up my eyes to there's so much that we're not talking about. There's so much that we're not discussing. And all of these things are intertwined into each other. And if we could just take a moment to put some space in between what we're experiencing and what we're feeling, we can get a lot more done. But what I learned was that, um, of course, I wasn't going to be able to stay in the military forever. I was going to have to have another job, you know, once I left there anyway. Um, so it was important for me to make sure I take advantage of the education benefits that I had while I had them. Um, so not, it was, it was a huge sacrifice, um, you know, working full time, going to school full time, all of those years. Of course, there's probably a lot that I missed out on, but I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but it was once I started going through uh, my bachelor's degree and that's when I, you know, you get around like-minded people and then you see what they're doing in the field and you see what they're doing out and how they're impacting people. And it's like, wow, I wanna do more than that. I wanna do what they're doing. But I learned also with that degree was that I'm not smart enough to continue with psychology. <laughs> way too, <laughs> way too, too much science in it for me. Um, and then I actually found out, okay, so what else can I do besides that and came across counseling. Um, and so uh, once I moved to San Antonio, I found Webster University and I attended uh, Webster University in San Antonio. And that was a life-changing experience too. 
you know, just at that point, I was actually in the classroom. I attended in person and I actually got to meet more people in the field at that time. Um, and that was a great inspiration and motivation for me um, because now it's, it, I kind of felt more like that was kind of where I belong. But I also seen that as a veteran, we're not getting the care that we need on active duty. We're still not getting the care that we need either. Um, and I just seen a place where I can make a difference. And like you said, us being in this field, I am a, a licensed professional counselor associate. And unfortunately, all of this context does not allow for people with my license to have our own practices um, or to go into business for ourselves. We haven't been allowed to accept direct payment. Um, so unfortunately, I've been at the mercy of trying to find a job. Um, and Texas has been strict on, I can't be on a 1099, I have to be on a W-2. Um, so that posed a whole different challenge for me. Um, and then even here locally, I was faced with the challenge of I'm not bilingual. Um, and a lot of the agencies here, um, you know, they serve as such a wide array of people, you know, it's most beneficial for them to have, you know, clinicians who are bilingual. Um, but I'm extremely excited that Texas has just changed our law, <laughs> you know, come the 1st of February that now LPC Associates, we can operate and own our own private practices. So Great. my hope is to, to go in that direction to keep moving mental health forward. Uh, well, we need you. And we, you know, it's, I'm, I'm so glad that that change in the law was made because as I mentioned, we, we don't, we do not have enough professionals uh, in this field. And you're absolutely right. You know, I, I work closely with Fort Bliss leadership and I, I'm on the House Armed Services Committee and I serve on the military personnel subcommittee. I'm the vice chairwoman. Mental health is um, always a challenge. And so we need to do things that make it easier for people who want to help others. Um, and, and hopefully maybe you and I can work together on that as a project. I would love that because um, I, I, you know, definitely share your, your perspective on that. One last question, Alexis. Um, again, you are so inspiring and just incredible. You give back and you give so much of yourself. Is there someone who inspired you to, to be not just so generous with your time and your goodwill and your talents, but, but to be the, a leader and a servant? I'd probably have to give that to my daddy. Hmm. I definitely have to do that. Um, I was raised by a single parent. Um, I was raised by my father. Um, he passed away almost four years ago, hmm. um, which was really hard because I, it was literally a year after I got off active duty. I was in the middle of my master's program. Um, but he taught me to be humble. You know, he, he definitely taught me that, you know, you're here to do something, but at the same time, don't get too comfortable because <laughs> everything you have and you work for can be taken away from you at the same time. Yeah. So it's, it's, I've been extremely blessed to see a wide perspective of how life can happen. And I've chosen to do what feels good to me. Oh, well, that's incredible. And what you've chosen that feels good for you is great for our community. So Alexis, thank you for all your incredible service. Thank you for your passion and your devotion to El Paso, to veterans, to those who seek help and support and assistance. Um, it's no wonder that you are one of our local heroes. And so I hope that the community that's um, watched this event with us um, is as inspired, and I know they are, as inspired by you as, as I and as my team and I have been. So thank you, Alexis. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. And I appreciate the opportunity and I am looking forward to us working together more. I love it. I love it. Thank you. And bye, everyone. Thanks for tuning in.